A few months after I made a video about these caterpillars that live inside a flat tube that looks like it's covered in sand, I found a lot of them crawling up the wall in my garage where I grind flour to make bread. I decided to put them into a container with some flour to see what they develop into. It turned out to be quite amazing. These caterpillars don't have the ability to climb on smooth surfaces, so they were slipping in this plastic container. I put a light green piece of paper underneath them so that they could crawl around. During the following days, some of them stopped crawling and sealed both ends of their tubular home. I assumed that they were turning into pupa. I cut a few of them open to see what was inside. The cocoons that came from my garage were gray, but there was a reddish cocoon in my bathroom. I have no idea what the red particles are. I cut it open and inside were lots of hairs from my head and some fibers from clothing. However, there was no caterpillar inside. All of these tubes had a caterpillar when I put them into the container, but for some reason some of the tubes turned out to be empty. I never found any dead bodies, so maybe they ate one another. Some of the cocoons had a pupa inside, such as this one. Also inside was the skin from the caterpillar, along with the shell of its head. The skin is the wrinkled white material, and the dark area by the arrow is the shell of its head. Some of them I cut open too soon, and the caterpillar was in a comatose state, perhaps in the process of turning into a pupa. Or maybe it was dying. Some of them were obviously dead and drying up. The marks on this ruler are millimeters. Each pupa was a slightly different size, they are initially very light brown color, and they became increasingly dark as their scales developed. The two knobby tubes along the outside of the pupa are the antenna casings. These tubes connect to the pupa at its head and then run along the outside of it. Here are the wings. The other lines are the legs. The wings are also in a separate casing. The dark spot at the top is an eye. Here is an antenna of an adult moth. It appears to be composed of segments. The shell on the pupa so closely matches the body of the moth that you can see the segments of the antenna. When the moth hatches, it has to pull each antenna out of its casing and one moth had a slight problem in which the very tip got stuck and broke off. It's not the best design. When they were ready to hatch into a moth, they became almost black. Occasionally they would wiggle. None of the moths hatched while I was watching them, however. Instead, I would find an empty casing, and nearby was a moth. For some reason, every newborn moth would vibrate both antenna. I never saw them stop vibrating them, even after they had been alive for a day. These newborn moths hadn't yet lost many of their scales, so the ends of their wings looked almost like feathers. The blurry line by the arrow is the vibrating antenna. Here is a closer view of the long scales at the end of the wing. Its head seems to be covered with hairs, but the rest of it is covered with scales that look similar to those of a butterfly. The scales fall off extremely easily, and the only reason I can think of is to make it easy for them to get out of spider webs. The scales also have jagged edges, and I suppose that provides better camouflage by making the scales look blurry. After a moth hatches, it cannot fly very well for many hours. Even so, a few of them managed to fly away into my house. Since I had already seen a few of them turn into moths, and they always did it in the exact same manner, I didn't need to watch any more of them, so I decided to kill the moths after they hatched. I poked one lightly to kill it without squeezing the guts out. To my amazement, 
it began wiggling its body in the same manner as when they lay eggs. I was shocked to discover that eggs began coming out of its body. I quickly grabbed the camera. How is it possible for a newborn moth to lay eggs? These moths are apparently designed only to reproduce. Every time I critically injure one of them, they start laying eggs. However, in order for a newborn moth to lay eggs, that means the eggs must be fully developed as soon as the moth crawls out of its casing. This is so bizarre that it makes me wonder if perhaps the newborn moth flew away and some other moth landed in the container when I wasn't looking. This was the only moth in the container, so none of her eggs could possibly have been fertilized. I assumed that the moth was simply going through the motions of reproducing and that the eggs would be sterile. The moth is laying on its back and its final egg fell between its two wings. You are looking at the underside of its wings. They have very long scales. It looks like it has hair on its wings. It laid about eight eggs. I put most of them into a small plastic container, but I left the one that was sitting between the wings. Here is an egg that I moved to a plastic container, and it is sitting next to a hair from my head to give you an idea of the size of it. To my amazement, fifteen days later, the eggs began to hatch. Here is that last egg to be laid. The baby caterpillar is crawling around on its dead and dried up mother. Her dead body looks messy because some other caterpillars were crawling around on it and covering it with webs. The eggs that I put into the plastic container started hatching a few minutes later. The caterpillars look the same as those in the video that I made months earlier. When I made that other video, I had no idea what the caterpillars would eat, but now that I realize that they eat grain, I sprinkled some coarsely ground wheat into their container. That is what the white fluffy stuff is in the image. This caterpillar is trying to get its rear end out of its eggshell. The long dark object on its left is that hair from my head, and to its right is an egg that has not yet hatched. I was expecting the caterpillars to eat the grain, and they may have done that, but it seems that their first priority was to build a home for themselves. They attached the tiniest bits of grain to a web and created a hollow tube to live in. Unlike spiders, which produce webs at their rear end, these caterpillars seem to produce a web from something that is near their mouth. These caterpillars did not want to live in the plastic container. After they created their tubular home, they spent their time trying to get out of the container. I suppose they wanted to go somewhere dark so that they could hide. They became frightened very easily, but they managed to climb up the side of the container and onto my finger. It is amazing that these newborn babies, with almost no brain, can build a home for themselves and then travel around in it. They are smaller than my fingerprints. How did a newborn virgin moth produce these? Here is one of them trying to get underneath that same hair from my head. I put them back into the container and put a piece of plastic over the top. To my amazement, when I checked the next day, all of their tubes were empty. I couldn't find the caterpillars anywhere. I don't know if they figured out how to climb out of the container, or if they died and shriveled up into such small pieces that I didn't notice them among the bits of grain. I killed about three moths so far, and each of them laid eggs, so I was starting to wonder if every moth has both male and female organs and is capable of laying eggs. Snails have both male and female organs. So I found another moth in my house and poked it slightly to critically injure it. 
and it began to go through the motions of laying eggs, but nothing came out. Did it already lay its eggs? Or is this a male moth? If so, that means that when the male moths are critically injured, they struggle to reproduce in the hope that there is a female nearby. These moths are more evidence that living creatures have only one purpose, and that is to reproduce. Not surprisingly, sex and reproduction are an extremely sensitive and significant aspect of human life. It's interesting to consider the possibility that moths are only one of many creatures that become sexually active when they are dying. It could explain the expression panic sex. Do a search for that on Google and take a look at what you get. The criminals who are hoping for what they call doom, such as war with Iran or economic chaos, are occasionally fantasizing about panic sex on their forums.